Hello. Can anyone around here speak basketball? There it is. It's the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. Kyle Welcome to the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. I am your host, Freddie Rebus. And who, sir, are you? Uh, I am the producer. My name is Matt Duncan. And uh, the year is 2020. How are you doing? I am doing quite all right. Uh, did you, you, you look like you're, you're doing all right as well. You're drinking some red wine. I've had a little touch of the red wine. Uh, as, as we talked about in the podcast too, I had some meat and potatoes for dinner. So feeling very rich feeling, uh, you know, uh, like I'm going to have a, a real good snooze tonight, you know, Oh, good. You know, feels like it's a Sunday, the kind of meal you have, you know, uh, meat and potatoes. So I, you just don't, <laughs> everything's up in the air now. <laughs> Sunday dinners are now Tuesday. I don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing out there. Um, it's, a, it's a wild world world we're living in, in, uh, in COVID 2020. And, and I just want to say to the people out there, Matt is so wonderful. But when I brought up that red wine, you know, in my head, I was like, Oh, I really should mention that he also had meat and potatoes. <laughs> and I just, I know I had that in the back of my head. I'm like, oh, he'll mention it. And boy, oh boy, you did not disappoint. You let people know, hey, I'm not just drinking red wine. No. Okay. No. I'm not just <laughs> pounding French rabbit. I am having a delicious, succulent, yeah. uh, a- hearty meal. Uh, cheers to you, Matt. Cheers to you. It's my uh, pre podcast uh, game plan for today. So it's a good one. Worked out. Um, Matt, we got a bunch of stuff going on. Um, yeah. Uh, our, our, our network, Sonar Network, is doing uh, a, a bunch of cool Christmas stuff that we are involved in, and we're going to be doing cool stuff. So why don't you take it away? Well, the Sonar Network has something coming up called the 12 Days of Sonar, and it's going to be running from the 12th of December till the 23rd. So uh, this is to hold you over during all that Christmas shopping you're going to be doing online. And what they are doing <laughs> is they are launching their own uh, YouTube channel. And as well, I guess they're they're uh, spritzing up their Patreon with a huge celebration. So they're calling it the 12 days of sonar every day of these, of these 12 days, there's going to be different podcasts doing a live stream. We are doing our first live stream in a long time. I feel like we, it, my computer almost blew apart the last time we did it back uh, years and years ago. We did it for Facebook live, but we're going to be doing it on our YouTube page. So our next episode, you know, we always release them on Wednesday. We'll be doing our next episode live for you on Wednesday. So you can see it there wow. first on YouTube. And then, uh, of course, they'll be on all the podcatchers uh, shortly after that. Well, uh, Maddie, I hope your computer doesn't explode. <laughs> I don't know. We've never done it with the Zoom and the YouTube. And the, I think it was like another program I was using for Facebook Live. It just it was it was doing a lot. There's a lot of computing power being used. I feel like it'll be a little smoother on this one. So Folks, we'll see. You're hearing how the sausage is made. Yeah. Yeah. Right I'm, I'm, more, I'm ripping and it open. And you know what? We're going to mix it, it in and make a pasta with the sausage. Well, why don't you rip this open? Tell them about this sweet, sweet anti itch freaking warm <laughs> toque I got on, huh? Guys, we're running low on these Confederacy of Dunks toques. They are anti itch. You will never scratch your head. Never, never again. And that's uh, that's probably after you take the toque off too. No more head itches because not only is it anti-itch toque, it's uh, it, it also <laughs> prevents just general itching. It's so. a miracle worker. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, Check I wish, out. I Check wish the X box. was, was, uh, or, you know, there was no plague and we could have had the exhibition because we were prepared to have a booth set up to sell these toques. Oh my goodness. You get, I still have socks from the X that are so tight. They hurt my ankles. I want to have the opportunity 
opportunity to <laughs> to do that to somebody, not necessarily in the same way, but to give them some dukes, some anti itch yeah, dukes. Absolutely. A high quality anti itch dukes. <laughs> um, 20 bucks but, a head pop on Shopify, and uh, you'll get that snail in the mail. Cool. Well, I mean, Matt, is there anything else? You know, people want to help us out. Just, you know uh, what? We've got a Patreon. Us? You can go to dunkspodcast.com. You can listen to our episodes there. We have all the different seasons we've had. You can go back to the Kawhi season of season six, I think Whoa. it was, which was, you know, it's just a, it's a roller coaster season. I feel like one day a lot of people are going to go back and listen to that season and be like, wow, remember because we have the vibe of what everyone was feeling from the beginning, from, from the moment he got traded right till when he went out the door with our championship. So, time capsule. you know, it's a time capsule. It really is. We've done enough of these seasons now. And with the season, uh, the new season starting in a couple of weeks, that means season eight of the Confederacy Dunks will be starting as well. So that's an exciting thing. Eighth Very season. Exciting. Well, yeah, well, let's, uh, I mean, podcast.com, all our socials, our podcatchers all there. Check it out. Yeah. Check it all out. Uh, this is going to be a good episode. Um, the next time we come to you, we will have played, I believe two preseason games already. My God. Oh, wow. Um, against, uh, the Charlotte Hornets. So basketball is in fact upon us. And, uh, I think we should just jump right into the pod. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to say this. Black Lives Matter, email your city councilors, defund the police. Maddie, if you feel like we're good to go, please, sir, just give me the okay. <laughs>、okay, um, let's get,、uh, let's get humming here on, on the guests.、Uh, I'm going to bring in the first guest,、uh, a good friend of mine, known him for a super long time. Hilarious man、uh, living in the uh, gorgeous uh, waterfall filled city of Hamilton、uh, right now.、Um, massive basketball fan, you know, just, just jack of all funny trades. Uh, uh, he's a, he's a, a major player in uh, uh, an awesome sketch group, Tony Ho. I don't know why I said he's a major player. <laughs> like, there's, there's three people, they're all hilarious. One's my brother.、Um, they, uh, yeah, they have a podcast uh, uh, that I believe is on its second season that they're putting out with CBC.、Uh, so make sure you check that out, Tony Ho.、Uh, without further like, sloppy ado, give it up as loud as you can, even if you're at home alone. For Adam Niebergall. <laughs> living wet, baby. Living wet. How you doing? Living, did you、I'm, say living wet? Yeah, because I'm in all the waterfalls all the time. Right. Yes. <laughs> Um, you said that. I said that. Yeah, I brought up the whole waterfall <laughs> thing. That's on me.、Um, how you doing, man? Thanks for, thanks for joining the pod. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks,、uh, thanks for having me. How are you doing? Does anybody ever ask that? Never. No one ever does. <laughs> and they don't want to know because it's like it gets real dark real quick.、Um, <laughs> right. No, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, I'm feeling good.、Um, yeah, let's,、uh, let's bring on guest number two.、Uh, Uh, pumped to have him back on. I think it's his second time on the podcast. Correct. Yeah, second time. He, you know, he should have been on many more times, but I feel like I'm going to remedy, remedy that now and also in the future.、Uh, he's、uh, known for a Ball on Blast podcast,、uh, the、uh, On Blast Podcast Network.、Uh, I think I got that right.、Um, Yeah, he's,、uh, he's amazing.、Uh, you should check him out on YouTube. Check out his pod for sure.、Uh, give it up as loud as you can, even if you're at home alone for Sheldon Alex- Alexander. Okay, okay. This is your track. I think it's probably the same one as before. It sure is. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. I like it. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, Never gone this、okay. long. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Oh, God.、Um, Matt really, I think, you know, if you're watching this,、uh, Matt really helps sell the song. 
Um, <laughs> Sheldon, how you doing? You're, you're, you're feeling it. It's a bit of a vibe at least, right? It's a vibe. It's a definite vibe. Uh, I think you said that last time too. <laughs> <laughs> Must I be. mean, it's, it's factually it's correct, vibe, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. It's a Tuesday, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's but, crazy. Uh, yeah, things are all right. Can't complain at all. Talking basketball, which means the NBA is right around the corner. There will be games on my TV screen again. So I'm okay with that. Yeah, we got our first uh, Raptors preseason game on Friday, uh, I believe, yeah. uh, against against the Hornets. So it's uh, it's going to be good. Um, yeah, thanks for coming back. Uh, pumped to have you. I really like your. Um, well, both you guys are dressed really nice right now. Um, I like that. Is, is that a nice like Jordan blue hoodie? It is a Jordan blue hoodie. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's been straight just track suits and hoodies for the last. However many months we've been doing this, but yeah. uh yeah. Yeah, so can't say I've been uh I've been hiding out in much else other than hoodies and track pants, so yeah. We all, we all need good track pants, sweatpants right now. Adam, you got you, you you got a Raptors jersey on? Yeah, this one's good. My uh my <laughs> my brother like doesn't believe in um in like paying full price for like uh sports merch. Okay. So he's constantly buying me like knockoff, uh, like sports stuff. <laughs> it's like, nice. It's like, so it looks like it's a real thing, but it's like, it's like, it's like, I don't know. It's like digitally it, printed on. Or does he just like shop like Life with a Y? Like yeah. Exclusively yeah. a Canadian tire. That's like the, uh, <laughs> Toronto sports team yeah. ripoff. So store. I didn't just put it on for the pot. I like wore it to work today. So. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's, it looks nice. Um, a lot of knockoff stuff's nice. Uh, Dan Galli, a former guest of the pod, has, uh, I think it's like Toronto Raptors World Champions or something <laughs> nice. like that. But it's so, it is, everything else looks perfect, I swear. Um, but uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's start talking Raptors ball. Maddie, I know you got some delicious Raptors sting for me. So please, good sir, whatever you got. Give it to me. TZ. Hashtag RTZ. I've got like three stings going on right now. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> well, you know, wow. a bit sloppy. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, busy, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's busy in the, uh, the Matt audio closet. These, right I got now. the meat and potato sweats. It's okay. Got, you know, for, for anyone who is unaware, Matt is, he's <laughs> drinking red wine. He's eating that. He's eating Matt and potatoes um, and he's just going hard, but it's okay. Uh, I'm a stutter maniac and here we are. Uh, Adam, let's, uh, let's go to you first. So, uh, I mean, you know, I'm not going to pretend I'm like some super coach know-it-all and uh, I, I can, you know, I'll be able to trace every move that every assistant coach uh, has made and, you know, a, a, every franchise, but it does seem like this, uh, this Chris Finch guy uh, is super familiar with Nick Nurse, has coached against him uh, as a player, has coached against him as a coach, um, has uh, coached with him uh, in the Houston organization. And has also been like a major, you know, factor of Houston, New Orleans, uh, and Denver uh, in the past, you know, I, like roughly decades. So lots of good stuff. Uh, lots of like, I think, forward thinking basketball. Um, I guess, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to push this question towards what do you think, what kind of ingenuity or new ideas do you think? could be brought to the Raptors like half court offense. Yeah. You know what? I, um, I find it funny. It's like, I, I think like before Nick nurse, I think nobody was, would be um, like obsessed with the fact that we're getting like a new assistant coach or whatever. <laughs> but now, now that uh, now it's coming in and I feel like everybody's like, so like obsessed with coaching as like a part of like, like above basketball in general. I find that kind of funny um yeah no but, it's, a, it's a weird it's a weird trend sorry no i mean yeah i don't know if you had anything that in, in it first with that but uh i you know like I, I don't know i mean like i feel like 
obviously the the half court offense has to get better, but I, like I, I don't know if I, I have any specific ideas about what he's going to do for that. You know? No, yeah, <laughs> I mean, question. like I, I, I don't either. But uh, I guess I'm like my my head's in the in in the direction of kind of like what you had with Houston was so unique and like a guy like Harden has his own orbit and everyone can kind of like space out. And, you know, with this team, with, with Kyle, with Fred, with OG, with Pascal, like, do you think we can, I don't know, kind of craft a more like three point heavy offense, or do you think it's like, we're going to be like a lot closer to what we were last year? in that like we're kind of a defense first team that relies on transition. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think realistically you can expect that again. Like uh, I, I feel like it's going to be defense first. I feel like it's going to be sort of move the ball around because there's like, there's good slashes on the team, like Fred and you know, stuff like that. But there's also like a lot of physical limitations, like both, you know, the backcourt's pretty, pretty, you know, short, whatever Mm -hmm. i guess like in terms of like like basketball anyways they're much taller than me much taller than me (laughs) but you know maybe he can figure out something with like i you know start focus on sort of pascal see what you see help him like sort of like become that sort of like because he's the one without the limitations you know yeah yeah that's a good point i feel like if you're gonna unlock something still on this team i'm kind of thinking it's you know, yeah. Where are you going to unlock that, like, you know, weapon to the offense and build on? Like, I think it's, you know, probably Pascal, maybe hopefully parts of OG. Mm-hmm. We'll see how much better, you know, Fred can get. Um, but I think, I think you kind of touched on what I'm looking for in this question, which is like the Raptors were very much like a, this like high IQ, amazing defense that at the end of the day kind of, ended up being like an equal opportunity offense, which was awesome. But then you see mm-hmm. the limitations of that in the playoffs when you're not like, you know, have a Kawhi or, or, or a hammer like Harden or, or something that can just like ram, you know, just like ram another team plus have IQ. Um, Sheldon, yeah, this is a, a, a I mean, yeah, a bit I of a soup so. of an idea, but like, what are you, you know. thinking as far as the, you know, the Raptors half court next season, do you think, no, I think you're, I think or... you're totally on the right track there, right? It's, it's the Raptors are a team without that kind of all-star, just top of the line guy. And I think they kind of ran into trouble last year when, and especially in the playoffs where you kind of fall into the ISO ball. And then that becomes a little bit of an issue because they can't really like Pascal's not that guy, right? That's not his strength. And I think the same thing goes for a lot of the other guys on the raps, whether it's Kyle or Fred as well. So I think, if you're trying to come in with a different kind of offense, I think one of the keys has to be maintaining the ball movement, but also just getting Pascal in easier spots to get him some easier buckets. Cause I think he had to work a little too hard at times. And especially with defenses starting to shade towards him or, Mm -hmm. you know, he's at the top of the, the uh, scouting reports now, right. He's not surprising anyone. And you kind of saw that from the start of the year to the end of the year, his averages kind of went down as the year progressed. And part of that is game plan. Part of that is now on him to make the adjustment. And part of that can be with the new offense, just putting him in better spots to succeed, getting him some easier baskets. Yeah, no, I think it's, that's, that's a great point. And it makes sense that we all kind of like gear towards Pascal. I mean, you know, yeah, just, just thinking about him, you know, kind of wearing down a little bit throughout the season being scouted. I think he, hurt his groin. I think that was his injury. Um, it's so weird with the, you know, with the season kind of like stopping in the middle with the, with the, with the bubble and co and COVID and everything. But yeah, I, I remember being frustrated in the playoffs, watching Pascal kind of try to back down possession after possession, you know, you know, he has the strength and the craft and the ability, but Boston was so sophisticated that it just seemed like he needed to get, easier he needed to have a place on the floor where he could shoot up for another guy reliably um and mm-hmm. yeah maybe maybe that's more face up action or i don't know what but yeah there there is kind of this this wear and tear that i feel like we might have to start thinking about uh for pascal or just like ease you know because he doesn't yeah. shoot a lot of free throws either right so no um 
let's uh, let's move to the the Clippers, and this is a bit of like a a joke of a question, but. I just feel like the Clippers, it's like, it's so silly now with like, it started with, for me, Bomber and, you know, um, oh, well, I can't think of his name right now. Uh, Lawrence Frank. Lawrence Frank. You know, yeah. spying on Kawhi and like doing all that stuff. And, you know, obviously they did get Kawhi, but then the way to kind of like imploded for them this year and you know we both the clippers and the raptors went to seven games ours was i would say quite a bit more impressive than theirs um and then you know all this stuff it's like they need a real point guard and now they got surge and they're doing this like what about scarves thing and i guess <laughs> yeah sheldon i'm gonna stick with you i just feel like this, they're they're go they're they know they're pathetic they know they're like trying to steal the soul of the Raptors. And I actually think they're fine with that because they're like, we're in LA. We'll never be the Lakers. Let's try and steal this team's soul. Um, so in the spirit of that, what's something that they could do to like further double down and just be like, no, no, we're like, we are the Raptors. There's, there's nothing the Clippers can do to not be the Clippers. And what I mean by that is they will always just be the lovable losers. Like even when we think things are going to turn around, they got Kawhi, they got Paul George, their team should be great. No, they find a way to mess it all up. And that's a thing where you realize it's really about your culture. And you think about teams that have been successful throughout the NBA, whether it's the Lakers, whether it's the Celtics, whether it's even the Raptors who have a successful culture that we've seen now for seven straight years, you've never really been able to say the same about the Clippers. And part of that is because they have no culture other than being the little brother that the Lakers fans just make fun of. Like think about it. Even if the Clippers were to win the championship, what would the answer be? The answer would be, Oh, well the Lakers have 17. So there's yeah. literally nothing they can do. They're always just going to be the Clippers. There's a famous story of when they signed Chris Paul and they had him go uh, throw out the first pitch in a Dodgers game and he got booed. Like, think about that. You're in LA. <laughs> You're the new signing for the That's Clippers. Awesome. You're throwing out the first pitch and you get booed. So of course they're <laughs> going to try to be like, oh, well, the Raptors did it with Kawhi. So why can't we? It's like, it doesn't really work like that. But they can't figure that out. So I don't know run it back again with Reggie Jackson at the point guard position and see how that goes. Sure. Um, that's the perfect answer. And like, they it really like go straight to the core of like they're, Yeah. I mean, you know, Donald Sterling, like I you moved them from like, you know, San Diego to mm -hmm. the, to, to Los Angeles. Cause he was trying to like emulate, you know, Jerry Buss or whatever. And it's like, yeah, they they just have this, their culture is so just like, I don't know, weak sauce. Like it's just not, <laughs> it's everything is a bit icky. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think this question is basically just a slanders the clipper or <laughs> slanders, slander the clippers uh, base. You know, it's not a lot of analysis going on, but um, yeah, Adam, for you know, in the spirit of that, what can the clippers do just to further humiliate themselves? Or like Sheldon said, should they just like, should it just be an accepted fact that these are clowns? Yeah, yeah, they suck. I, I'm mad too. We're <laughs> you're obviously so mad, but I'm definitely also mad. Um, yeah. <laughs> they, I guess, like maybe they could make like a you know how like um, there was like Tamagotchi, and then there was like Nano came out, mm -hmm. but they just like have a they put out like a Nano, you know, like of of like us, I guess, or like yeah, that'd be funny or. <laughs> or <laughs> like I'm thinking like the like um Tyler Hansbro maybe Tyler Hansbro Nano that'd be good yeah yeah um and and Matt I'm sorry I I I I should have told you but I got to put you on the spot a little bit because I, I know you you'll have a good answer for for this question what what can the Clippers do to further you know just like try and copy the Raptors like should they you know kidnap uh, Sir Alex McKechnie or <laughs> um, you know what? That was a weirdly dark joke. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna take that back. Um, <laughs> what did he do to anyone? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just mean they, they, they probably wanted to make joking. I'm joking. I'm being stupid. I'm being stupid. 
Uh, so what could the Clippers do to keep copying the Raptors kind of thing? Yes. Yeah. Well, here's here's what you want to do. We got to go way back. I want to I want to see Bruno on their team for a little bit. <laughs> oh my God! If they got Bruno, that could be something. <laughs> and uh, and maybe Bebe as well because you know it was kind of fun to have the uh, the duo Brazilians on there. Uh, and you know, put some kind of crazy pressure on them. See how that goes. I think it's important for the Clippers to keep. Uh, if they want to do what we do, you know, you you uh, you put a lot of pressure on those draft picks, right? Even if they're high. So, uh, yeah. Bruno okay. to the Clippers. <laughs> Bruno to the Clippers, thank you. Uh, I like how that was, very, that was a very serious proposal. Cheers. Um, I think Bruno's available too, no? Yeah, he, he re-signed with Houston, no didn't he? He, he, he went no back idea. to the Rockets. Yeah. He did. I have no idea. Yeah. Oh, he's wow. back on Houston. He's not available. No. Oh, wow, you two oh, are wow. the, the Bruno. The Bruno <laughs> club. You went to the Rockets. <laughs> yeah, to let us know that Bruno is very much spoken with for. You. Yeah, I, I, How dare my we? bad. My bad. Yeah. Any Bebe updates? Do we know where Bebe yeah. is? Yeah. Yeah. Where is Bebe? <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Let's uh. Let's go to you, Adam. On um. Yeah, kind of, kind of like just further speculation about um, n- not just offense, but uh, yeah, what what are you expecting from from OG this year? Do you think it's like a full breakout year, or is it kind of like more of the same? Like, I think I, I can bring up his averages. You know, like his his offensive production is is obviously such a you know. I don't want to say small part of his game, but he's so incredible and versatile on defense that. He he might very well be one of these players that you can't fully measure by their kind of offensive offensive output. But um, yeah, what are you expecting from OG this year? First of all, I think he's going to learn how to dribble this year. I think this is going to be the year that he does that. And uh, I, I, you know what? I like I I can really kind of see it that he's sort of on the cusp of something. Like he he was starting to do really special things in the playoffs and stuff. Um, he still kind of looks weird when he moves. I'm not like totally convinced of his humanity, but there's, you know, there's another guy I know like that. Um, Fair enough. But I, uh, I, I, uh, I think he, I think he, he could make the jump. I think if he ever is going to make it, I think it'll be this year. Cause he, he just really seems like he's right there, you know, and he, he must, I bet he will be inspired to, to, uh, to do that. I guess there's a weird thing, and I think this is kind of like maybe unfair to athletes, where it's like if if they don't make it clear to you everything that they're thinking, or like that you can't read them like a book just from by watching them, that that you expect that they're they, they've got nothing going on in there, you know? Um, or like you need to be able to trust that they're going to take that next step, and I think that that thing isn't there with OG. Like I think you'll never be able to know what's going on with that, but which I also kind of love, you know. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I, I think he'll do it because just from what I'm seeing, he's, he's playing so well, you know? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be an opening for him, like for you put, to be getting shots and doing special stuff, you know, it's like, for, Oh, for sure. Especially yeah, he, now, you know, he's going to have a ton more to step up. Yeah. Like a ton more shots and opportunity. I think, um, it's just as like a natural, you know, a natural growth. And it's, it's, it's funny, you, you know, you touch on, his personality. Cause I think that does, you know, it plays in every player's game. And I think also in this era, you know, uh, of the Raptors, it's kind of like with, with Pascal being the guy of the future, he's fully like Neo matrix, like, you know, inject me with hooks. I'll do 10,000. Got those. <laughs> I'm the fastest player in the league. Oh, uh, I can, you know, now I'm above the break three, but not in the playoffs. And it's like, but next year I will be. And like, yeah, he seems to have this like almost mathematical ability to, you know, like, like a 2k 21 or something like just gain skill points in his game. And yeah. OG, I think it's a lot more fluid and his career has been, you know, I think the first three years has been quietly more 
tumultuous and then then pascal's with you know his injuries and and personal loss and uh you know appendix bursting before we won the championship uh and then he has his big moment this year like you know he, he was he was crazy in the playoffs i thought like you know guarding bigs um being able to post people up uh and you know shooting so proficiently from three two and mm. Yeah, I, I'm just uh, Sh- Sheldon. Before I go to you here, uh, I'll just read out his his averages from last year. So he was uh, uh, ten and a half points, um, almost a block a game, uh, steal and a half, assist and a half, five rebounds. Uh, on yeah, pretty efficient shooting, thirty uh, yeah. percent from three. Not bad, but I mean, I think at this point, this kind of has to be a year for OG, and it's kind of one of those things where it could be mutually beneficial. Because if OG has a good year, hey, contract time. Yeah. If so he does doesn't clutch. have a good year, right? If he doesn't have that good of a year, then, you know, he's going to feel it in the wallet a little. He's not going to get the big deal that he could get. Like, there's a world in which I believe a lot of Raptors fans, and I don't think this is reality, but I believe a lot of Raptors fans see OG being somewhat of Pascal and Fred in terms of being the future core of the Raptors going forward and that leading you to the promised land of some playoff success. I don't really think that, like, I don't think OG has shown us that yet, but if he is going to, this year is the year that that should happen. Surge being gone. That's what, like 14 points that needs to be replaced somehow. That's extra shots that need to be replaced somehow. And if OG is going to do that offensively, the key is going to be consistency which he hasn't had offensively his whole career. Now we saw glimpses, really good glimpses when mm-hmm. they came back in the playoffs in the bubble. He showed a lot of signs where he was really good, but still you couldn't really see him averaging 12 points even come playoff time. You want him to be in that 12 to 15 range if he is to be what we think he can be or what we think he should be. And it's it's enough of the, well, maybe OG or OG's coming. It's like, no, no, no. The Raptors need OG to be here this year if they are going to make a run in the East. Yeah, I think that's I, I think that's like super true for for this year. Um, and but I think like just to add on like a, a kind of, you know, Raptors fans are always until Giannis signs that supermax where we'll be <laughs> we'll be curious. Yes. Um, very true, very true. But you know, is there a world maybe? And I'll, I'll go to you, Sheldon, then then you, Adam, just to finish off the Raptors segment here. But is there a world maybe where because OG can't put out these offensive numbers, but it's still mm-hmm. so awesome on defense, we're kind of able to sign him on the cheap and lock down a ridiculous court to court, say a Giannis or a like, you know, super duper star. Sheldon, is that? Yeah, I think that's, that's definitely possible. And that would be perfect, right? Like OG is a great defender. And I think that if he is a starter, but he is not one of the people that you're relying on to get you buckets, that means your team is really good. Right. If he's like your fourth option on offense and your your team's probably really good. We saw yeah. that last year. The Raptors were a pretty decent team and they didn't depend on OG for scoring. That's a good point. If you're yeah. talking if you're talking about him being one of your top scoring pieces, then the Raps are probably looking up and saying, Uh oh, how are we gonna afford to repay OG, to re-sign OG, and then possibly add whatever that next piece is. If it's not Giannis, if it's Bradley Beal or something like that going forward, that gets that those things get tough, but in terms of being a piece for sure, he can do that, but they don't this season, they don't need that. They need scoring. And that's going to be my biggest worry looking at this Raptors team this season. Like where's the consistent scoring going to come from? And definitely OG is one of those people that they're, they're looking at. Yeah, totally. Um, Adam, what do you think, uh, like, you know, is there, is there a world where, where maybe OG, you know, is kind of like, I, I, I always kind of, for me, like the, the best version of OG is some kind of like Ron Artest meta world piece. Like, like that, I, I don't know, you know, I, I, that's not to speak ill on his name because he was a ridiculous defender yeah. and at his peak also, I think like 21 points a game or, you know, some like, like when he played for the Rockets and the Pacers, he was 
an all-star, I think. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, Adam, is there, you know, is there a world where it's kind of like he, he fits into that perfect contract slot? Yeah. For, first of all, I see him signing like such a cheap contract. But then, like, the next day he comes to, like, practice in, like, a really tiny scarf. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, I think we'll have to pay him a little bit better. Yeah, I, I wouldn't expect it. You know, who knows what what's going to happen. But I think, like, in terms of, like, him sort of getting, like, I, I feel like what I saw, the confidence that I saw, from him in the playoffs was, was so great to see. And I feel like the juice, like that juice, the swag, like I think can, like can unlock, it's not, it's not going to give him all the, he doesn't really have the stuff of a super dynamic scorer, but like mm -hmm. sometimes like the juice can do it for you. You know what I mean? Like, um, and, uh, I, I just would want to see, I just would want to see like what, what, it, what he can do if he can get really get his confidence going, you know, it's like probably ultimately it's still going to just be like shooting a lot of threes at a really good percentage and like sort of, you know, like uh, in the dunker spot sometimes kind of thing, but like what else can, can he mix into his, you know, artillery, you know? Yeah. I mean, he, uh, he talked about, you know, wanting to add, you know, kind of like a more, more proficient dribbles, uh, kind of like passing on the move was, was something he mentioned in his, um, uh, interview as well. Uh, but yeah, yeah, he's, he's an exciting person to watch. I think we, we, yeah, we've seen a lot from, and, and not to say that there won't be tons of growth as well from, from Pascal and, and Norm and, and Fred, I mean, like seen a lot in their own respective uh, I'm not, I, I don't want to say Norm is on Pascal's level, but yeah, but I, I think I, I personally am not expecting some type of huge explosion from Norm, but if it did happen from OG, I think, yeah, it's, it somehow seems more possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they're, they're both similar in the sense that they both just need consistency. That's the biggest key for yeah. each of them, OG and Norm, whichever one of them can be more consistent offensively that person's going to get more minutes and that person's going to get more money, right? It's kind of in their hands because the opportunity is there for them now. Yeah, it's true. And I mean, I, I still am hurting a little bit. Like I feel like Norm earned more of an opportunity than he got in the playoffs. Like, I, like early in that Celtic series, he just was cut from the rotation. And I don't know. I feel like Norm, he, I don't know. He's good in the playoffs. Like he's, he, he shows up, but um, you know, that's neither here nor there. This, you know, we're heading into a new season. It's going to be wonderful. Um, and nurse is obviously a, a super genius. Uh, so <laughs> let's, um, yeah, let's move on to some NBA stuff. Maddie, uh, if you got a Adam silver tugboat sound or whatever NBA Foley you have, I don't know what it is, but whatever you got, please, sir. Give it to me. National, National Basketball, Basketball Association. Association. Yeah. I can never hear it, but I try and time it out. Friggin' Zoom. Rock to baby. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I don't know if there was a tugboat in there, but we did let people know what the NBA stood for, National Basketball <laughs> Association. Uh, that's that's a main reason. I think I always hear that. Like a lot of people don't today. know, as I yeah, say. They're like, <laughs> they're like, thank you so much, sir, sirs. You know, uh, appreciate that. Um, let's go to you first. Uh, yeah, let's go to you first, Sheldon. Um, what do you think? Like, I, I guess I don't know all the exact details of this designated player thing um it seems like somewhat of you know uh like an, an an offering by the nba and an acknowledgement of covid and the the super kind of like rigorous difficult times player injuries and the fact that this is such a bizarre season that players will likely rest regardless of punishments so yeah. maybe they're trying to avoid that being a constant theme of the season. Um, but uh, yeah, like, yeah. So anyways, the designated player uh, 
rule to my knowledge is that if you have a key player that I guess you have to previously designate, you can rest them uh, on back to backs, like one of like the way we did Kawhi. Uh, but also please don't do that on a national TV game. So that yeah, seems think, to be the juggling, right? Yeah. I think they, they kind of have been trying to fight this whole load management thing. And it's, it's tough because we're Raptors fans. We enjoyed Lloyd load management when it was working for our benefit, right? Yeah, <laughs> that I whole season, it. I was kind of like, whatever, as long as you're ready for the playoffs, I don't care. You can miss a random Tuesday night game against the Knicks. Sure. Yeah. Whatever. It was great. So yeah, I mean, like we get it, but at the same time, how much more did we enjoy when like, I'll always remember that Kawhi versus KD matchup on like a Thursday night. I think I'm pretty sure it was a TNT game where they just went toe to toe and overtime. Like that was incredible. That's what the NBA is all about, right? Seeing the stars go one-on-one, but what started to happen as of late was you had a lot of these games where it's like bucks Lakers and LeBron's like, I'm going to rest. And he's doing it strategically right? Or, or Lakers Clippers and LeBron's going to rest and they're doing it strategically because they don't want to show too many of their, too much of their hand heading into the playoffs or whatever. But from a business standpoint, if you're the NBA, you can't do that to your partners and you can't do that to the fans. We want to see the stars play in those big time games. It's different for us because we get more of their games, just, you know, forget about local markets and all that. But in the States, if you're out of market, you only get to see, you know, KD's nets when they're on TNT, unless you have some package or whatever, you need those TNT games to have the stars. So you can't have them sitting out and I get it. And you know that this is going to be a weird year already with COVID and Mm -hmm. who knows what type of other things might pop up just on the sked. You want to, kind of stomp that out ahead of time and again i mean it's another shot at the clippers if you think about it because last year that was a major thing paul george and Kawhi leonard were resting games so much during last season and it was a joke so again another you can thank the clippers for that one and make fun of them for that but here we are adam silver trying to make another rule to force guys to play on national tv games like it shouldn't be that difficult Right. Like you shouldn't have to convince teams to do that, but here we are. Yeah. It's uh, it's interesting. Cause like, I feel like it's, it's not the same, but you know, similar to the draft, it's like, you know, you're not going to convince franchises not to tank. It just yeah. doesn't make any rational sense. So if you're like, if you have a superstar that can, can benefit from resting to win a championship, it's like, there's no fine. There's nothing that would make you make that like obvious of a mistake. And like, I, you know, you brought it up like as a Raptor fan, it's like, it's so key. And like, you know, we saw Kawhi injured in the playoffs in that run where he won the championship. And it's like, man, how much did each game he rested count towards our championship? It's like, it's obviously, you know, imperfect to measure i know they have like these like these these crazy technologies in the nba where they can tell when a guy's hamstring is like 60 percent worn out or whatever but yeah it's uh you know it's it's like kind of like an imperfect thing and mm-hmm. i think as we've seen with this season the the tv contracts do rule the day um, you know, they, the, the TV contracts were, they, they are there. Why we're starting the season on the, at this time. And you, there was a little bit of hubbub of like, I, you know, I think Danny green was on a podcast and was like, Oh, we'll see if that happens. And it was like one week later, it's like, Oh, it's happening. <laughs> Big time. It's happening. Everyone's playing. Oh. Everyone's showing up to training camp. Cheers. Like, you know, yeah. it's just like money does talk in that sense. It is a business, you know, um, even Harden showed up to camp today. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think like, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of this imperfect thing. I actually, you know, I kind of like, I like the designated player idea from a perspective of like trying to, I don't know, have that conversation with that team or with the teams, like knowing it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, it is, it is definitely, 
it's definitely an ongoing issue that I think is like pretty compounded. Um, Adam, what do you what do you feel about this designated player thing? I think Sacramento gonna rest Dare and Fox a bunch next year. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, oh, my God, all the small markets. I hope yeah, everyone. I hope Hayward gets rested yeah. so much. Um, you know, I, I try to read, like I, this issue is it's really it's an interesting issue. I find this a very interesting question. I, I think that. Like, uh, the, it, it, I try to, re- I can only speak for myself. And when I think about this, I try to remove myself from like my entitlement and just think about like, okay, these athletes want the time off. I don't think that they are lazy. I think that they like their bodies like are having a problem, you know, <laughs> like, like consistently and typically. And then I just think like of the, the sort of like, I guess I, I, I can't help but think of the sort of like storied, like um, sort of racial dynamic of the league. And then just like the, the concept of, of like, of like, let's say, okay, they double down and like, they try to con- like, instead of doing this move, they do the other move, which is like, you have to play. And then it's like, what, what does that feel like? What does that like mean? In, in yeah, the sort I mean, there's of, been in major of humanity. In the past. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, I, yeah, no, no I, I'm just saying that, yeah, they have, it's gotten ugly in the past. Like there's definitely been, you know, like, you know, San Antonio, um, I think Golden State as well. There's been like, the hammers come down a couple times. Um, but sorry, I feel like I, I interrupted. No, no I, I don't know. I bet. I, so I, I don't know. I, I get it. I get that. Like, I get that, that, that people, you know, that they bought the ticket and they show up and they should be able to see, I don't know, LeBron or whatever. But it's like, whenever I picture that person, that person sucks. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like, no, I didn't come here to watch basketball. It's like, I came for LeBron. You know, it's like, uh, well, you know, oh, oh gosh, we should, we should make the work. Yeah. The LeBron's 45. For it's <laughs> like, we gotta, we gotta <laughs> yeah. get this guy in the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, I, I think that, but like the concept of that person, maybe I'm, I don't know. That's a, my own bias. But, uh, I just, I think that like we should all be cool and, and let people um, try to enjoy their own bodies, like in their own human lives, uh, apart from sports. And <laughs> I don't know. It's, yeah, I don't no, know why we feel. I mean, yeah. No, from, from like a physical, like demanding standpoint, like that, like that's always, that's always made sense to me. And I feel like, <laughs> Yeah. The, you know, the money aspect like is where things like n- not like, or is where, is where things do kind of get confusing from and, and not from a perspective where it's like you're paid this and you have to play. It's to me, it's the, it's that like the money is divided by like, you know, by, by, by like each game, like, you know, it's not like the way the checks work and like, so yeah, I mean, you know, I'm just going to kind of keep going in this direction with this next topic because I feel like it's the Russ Wall trade. And my question is, what do you find most interesting about it? And I think we'll get to Russ and Wall in a sec, but I, I kind of, I previously mentioned Harden. And, uh, you know, Tim McMahon and Zach Lowe uh, were talking on the Low Post, and Lowe was just saying that, teams were, you know, very upset with, with, uh, with James Harden and like kind of like wanting some form of punishment because he wasn't reporting to the Rockets. And also, uh, you know, he's at the club or whatever uh, without a mask and it's making people furious. So it is this weird, like Adam, I guess what I'm saying to you is I, I definitely have always felt this weird kind of like tentative, I don't know. Like it doesn't feel right when, when punishment is the main, you know, form of kind of like communication that from the NBA or whether it's fines or, or what have you. And honestly, shout out to them uh, taking it easy on marijuana. That's not, that's not a subject, (laughs) but I feel like lots of players have been suspended, kicked out of the league. All sorts of shit has happened because of that. And it's nice that that we don't have to think about that. Um, but, uh, yeah, like just, just with the Harden situation and kind of like player power, where, where, where are you on like, and then I'm not trying to like make you think of a on the spot solution, but like, 
how do you, if you are the Rockets, how, like, what, what is the recourse to, or, or if you're, you know, Minnesota with Jimmy Butler or what have you with a player that's really not cooperating, is it, yeah, like, like, is, is there a proper re- recourse or I don't know. Is this for me? Yeah, it's for you, Adam. Yeah. <sighs> And that's a, that's a, that's a super hard question. It's like, obviously like for me, if I were a sports team and you know, I, I'm not, but yeah, you're no, you're, you're, this, we're talking to Adam Fratilla. <laughs> yeah. But in, in this, I like my, my inclination would be to be cool, you know, and like, ex, you know, like, uh, you want, you want to play the, 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 the person so that they feel like, uh, like they can speak their mind and be cool about things, but then you run into the issue of like, well, then they feel they can do whatever they want. Uh, and that's, uh, that's a, a dynamic that I deal with in my real life sometimes. Uh, and I fail at, you know? Um, yeah, I think it's really so hard. <laughs> that That's a, yeah, that's a failure for me. So. Yeah. And, and, and you know what I, you know, this is, it is a tough question and it's, it's one I'm asking. I definitely don't have the answer to, um, but yeah, Sheldon, like kind of, you know, we're weaving through a bunch of stuff here, but um, yeah, you know, the, the, just kind to of me, Harden to me, the James Harden power. thing. Yeah. The James Harden thing, it's kind of two separate issues, right? Like I, I view the two things kind of differently, him not showing up to camp. That's just leverage. You're never going to be able to get rid of that in the NBA or in any pro league because LeBron has just spent the last 10 years showing this whole player empowerment movement. Right. And we don't really know where the line is from LeBron to Jimmy Butler, to James Harden. Like, I don't know what the level is of player talent that wouldn't be able to get away with that. But James Harden is at that level where if he says, trade me, chances are he's going to get traded. And to be honest, I don't really have a problem with him using that leverage because I feel like anybody in any company would do the exact same thing if they had the leverage to do so. Totally. The problem with this issue, though, is the other side of it, right? It's what he's doing while he's not showing up to camp. And that's being out in clubs. And first off, like that part just seems so foreign to me right now. Like I can't even fathom right. being out in the club <gasps> right now. That's weird. But oh my God. the thing it does bring up is the, the NBA coming up this season. They're playing and traveling across the United States of America. There yes. are places in the United States where you wouldn't, you wouldn't even know that COVID is a thing. And that's just walking around. Forget about going into a club. Like that's walking into a restaurant, walking mm-hmm. into the bank. Like there's just certain places where the rules are so lax or there are no COVID rules. And so if you're a team that's traveling to those places, but you're coming from like New York or LA where there are strict rules in place. Yeah. James Harden's giving you a window into some of the problems the NBA is going to run into this season. And it's a reality. And so they have to come down on him now. Because if they don't, we're just going to see more problems like this. If you're playing in New York or LA and then traveling to, I guess, uh, Atlanta, let's say, as Lou Will made Magic City famous <laughs> during yeah. the, the, the time in the bubble. But if you go to some of those places and all of a sudden now there's no rules, so guys can go out, even though you have it that, you know, they shouldn't or whatever. I mean, that's it's it's a lot to ask. You got to up the penalty. You got to just have Mm. it instead of just being like something in the handbook. Hey, you're not allowed to do this. Like there has to be some stiff fines in this situation because you're dealing with the public health matter and James Harden walking around in strip clubs with no masks on and all that. Like that's just a bad look. And that's why NBA owners and other players should be mad at him too. Cause it's like, what are you doing? And then you're going to come to practice and, associate yourself with other guys who might be following the rules other you have older assistant coaches and stuff like that like that's just super irresponsible and a jerk move right i just edited myself because i don't know if i could swear on this oh, you can but, let him yeah. fly <laughs> I, I caught myself though right it's like jerk move but you know what i'm saying though like hey like, jerk like, packs a lot of punch yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. but you know what i'm saying though right it's just two yeah, separate totally. things and him you traveling gotta replace around the, like, uh, you got to replace the weed fine with the lemon pepper fine. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah, the lemon pepper fun. Um, I actually, I had it like a, a, I had it like a, I came up with a real answer when I like when I after I uh, said that weird thing before. I I'm, I I feel like the, the the only answer for teams in this situation is because like the you know it's unrealistic that you're going to be able to like, like people have been talking about the, like the, the player empowerment thing is like, is sort of ascendant right now. And that's great. It's a good thing. But I feel like your job as a team right now is to be like, people are getting great returns for their superstars right now. Like I feel like when the superstar is traded, a lot of the time the other team wins right now. And and I feel like that's your job as a team right now. It's like, you Mm -hmm. better have like a division that is like ready for this. You have a star, be ready for when they want out and like yeah. be looking around for what pieces you can get that you're going to build your team around if that happens. You know? And that's a great point, Adam. And I think that also kind of reminds me of this. This is all, there's so many moving parts, but when, you know, and, and looping in what Sheldon was saying too, about like being at the hardened level, you know, the super max level and, you know, the super max has to become this contract where it's hard to control and it has uh, side effects. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you have guys like wall and, and Chris Paul and, and Russ on these like just preposterously big contracts. And it kind of is hard to square with the money that some of the other players are making and it makes trades really complex and potentially makes other teams have like, you know, uh, you, you can get a giant haul back for a contract that big if you do it right. Um, but let's actually just go like, you know, let's zero back in on just the, the basketball trade. Uh, Cause I do think Harden aside, but he is a part of it, obviously um, the wall rusting is just fun as hell. So mm. Um, Adam, yeah. What, what's the most interesting part? We, we've gone the Harden direction. What's the most interesting part of the Harden wall trade for you? You know what? Oh, sorry. I the, think... uh, uh, Westbrook, uh, wall trade. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, I think that the, the most interesting part about that is the wizards. Like that I am kind of excited to see what that looks like. And like, I want to see, I kind of like, I, I'm a Westbrook fan, but like in certain iterations of Westbrook, I have been completely uninterested in watching him. Like in, in, in Houston, for sure. Like I've been not, uh, no thanks. Uh, <laughs> but like if, if he has a little more sort of, uh, sort of, room to like if he's not the second guy let's say i think he can be so much fun to watch and i feel like he might actually breathe some life into that franchise whereas i don't think that wall i think wall is a really really good player but i just don't think he had the same kind of thing going ever you know like i think he's really great but i I feel like this wizards is the first like wizards that I would be willing to watch in a long time. I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I totally agree. And it's, uh, I think as someone who was like very much like, I think Harden should win the MVP over Russ during that time. I've like since felt myself become like the biggest Russ fan because I think his inefficiency post MVP has just like, put him into a place where basketball fans, so many basketball fans like hate him and think he's mm-hmm. like the 190th best player in the NBA. <laughs> and it's wild to me. And it's like, I think he's going to be explosive in Washington. And I, I think, think so too. Beal are going to be incredible. And I think it's going to be a nightmare for most of the East. Um, yeah. And then also like, you know, to your point, um, you know, Wall is really, you know, was a special player, but I don't think ever was capable of an MVP season, like in that Russ stratosphere. So, um, but yeah, uh, you know, is, uh, is Sheldon, is that the most interesting, you know, is Russ in Washington or Washington yeah. relevant, you know, the most interesting part of the trade for you? Totally, right? And because to, to piggyback off what you guys were just saying, it's like, I was so amazed that, 
people are comparing these two guys as if they're the same caliber of player and they're just not right. Like you you were talking about Russell Westbrook and this season, my guy still put up like 27 points per game. Like he still had a really, really good year. Mm -hmm. He was on the all NBA team and it's like, they don't just give away all NBA marks. Even if you're on the third team, they don't just give that away to anybody. Like you have to be pretty good to get that. And so, and that was just this season. So it's weird to me. Like John Wall hasn't even played basketball for the better part of two years. He hasn't even played more than I think it's like 41 or 42 games since the calendar year of 2017. Like that's a long time ago. So if you look at it from that point and you think, okay, now I'm getting Russell Westbrook who in that same time went what triple double, triple double. And then last season still making all NBA these guys are not on the same level. So that's a point I don't get. I feel like Russ does get disrespected, as you said. And this trade, I get like the contracts work. And in theory, we think their style of play might be similar. But Russ is just a different beast. It's just that that's it to, to me, actually. I just think he's a different beast. Yeah. No, you guys, you guys both hit it. Um, okay. That, uh, that brings us to the, the final part of the pod Guys, it's quickish questions. Are you down for some some weird ass stuttery questions or what? No, nah, I gotta go. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> uh, Maddie, give me that quickish question, Stan. Um, Adam's still here. Uh, he said, gotta go, but he was smiling. He was smiling. Uh, okay, folks, this is quickish questions. Uh, I'm going to stumble. I'm going to stutter. I'm going to meander. I'm going to misread a comma or two. Might have a seizure or a stroke. That doesn't matter. You have to answer as quick as so only one way to read a comma, Freddie. Yeah, exa- <laughs> right. Exactly. You just take a little uh, breath. <laughs> yeah, take a breath. I can't. So I won't um, blaze through the comma. But uh, yeah, you guys got to answer as quick as humanly possible. Um, you can't stall. You can't phone a friend. Uh, Matt, I'm looking at you. Uh, you know, you got to hit me with that answer quick, okay? It's tough. Uh, I always use Matt as an example. I'm so sorry. One day he's going to probably I'm a, I like to filibuster, you know? <laughs> Yeah, none of that. No <laughs> us. Okay. Uh, are we ready? Yeah. Mm. Sure. Okay, let's we're gonna go uh, Sheldon, Adam, Matt. Um Okay, this makes sense. Uh, question for Sheldon. Ben from Northern. Does Kyle retire a raptor? And is Flynn a suitable replacement for when he does retire? I think Kyle will not retire a raptor. And I don't think Flynn is a good enough replacement now. I think the replacement is Freddie. Yep. Am I supposed to give a short answer here? Or no, that, 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 you know, you rocked it. Yeah, that was perfect. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Sorry. No, no, I'm, you know, I'm classically unclear. So it's, it's perfect. Uh, <laughs> Adam, uh, who got the Rona on the Raps org? Oh, who got the Rona? <laughs> Um, that's what, I guess yeah, people did. Uh, that's the COVID nineteen virus, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. That was uh, that was uh, Paul Paul Watson. I, I hope it wasn't. Um, I hope it was like if there's anyone that's evil in the organization. Um, although there's probably no one, so uh, whoever he, is, he just kind of looks like he like uh, goes around like using other people's straws. You know? No, he. Wouldn't. I don't know. Paul what, Watson. Know. Paul Watson. No way. He's gonna have a breakout yeah. year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no time for that. He's focused. Do we still have... go with the? How about we go with the raptor mascot? Oh, like the person in the mascot, but like the actual like costume. Oh, like that. It's kind of yeah, sick. yeah. Let's I think see, Paul yeah. Watson gave him the. <laughs> yeah, Paul Watson gave <laughs> one of the stripes. Who gave it? To, uh, then the inflatables have it now. Oh no! <laughs> okay, Matt. Uh, yes. Would, would 2020 have been a better year to launch CJ's PJs? Um, <laughs> I think that if he if it was going to launch, it should have dropped day one of the lockdown to cheer us up. 
Okay. Bear with me on this one, Sheldon. Okay. Seeing how Westbrook and Paul both went from hero to zero on the Rockets, how Kyrie has been seemingly unable to get along with any of his teammates, if Harden goes to the Nets, how long before Harden and Kyrie realize they can't exist together on the same team? A, four months. B, four weeks. C, four days. D, four hours. E, four minutes. Jesus. F, they'll be absolutely fine. History never repeats itself. It's a, it's gonna, a doozy. I'm going to go with uh, Zed and it already happened. They already realized it wouldn't be able to work. That's why the rumor has kind of gone away. Harden's still trying to get traded, but the Nets part of it is kind of not really been at the forefront. The latest we heard today was what? The Sixers? Mm-hmm. It's true. Yeah, apparently they've opened up their options. I think it so. already happened. They were like, wait, we can't do that. This <laughs> isn't going to work. I like it. The answer is Z. Adam. Okay. Okay. All the prime ministers of Canada, living and dead, are playing a game of pickup basketball. Who do you select first overall? <laughs> uh, how many of them do I know in this question? No, isn't this? I mean, <laughs> it's just whatever. Who do you think's the best best prime minister? I bet, best, like, best I bet that I like, and this is just like one of the only like one that I know. But Trudeau, I bet can ball pretty good. I bet he could hoop. Um, he just seems doctor. like he lives an effortless life, doesn't he? I bet he's got a nice release. Uh, he, yeah, for sure, it's true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The, oh, oh, there's two of them, right? So uh, this this most recent one. Prime oh, yeah, Ministers, right. Right, yeah, not not I Pierre. I just realized that. Not Pierre. Yeah, yeah Pierre's not more Pierre. Than, he's famous for he's the, dusty man. Trampoline he's stuff. Dusty. He's a slam ball guy. <laughs> um, Matt. Uh, yeah. Say a basketball player grew a three foot long tail during the off season. Yeah. Should he be allowed to use it during games? Would it be ruled a kickball if he hit it with his tail? Well, I think uh, us at the NBA, we don't discriminate against anyone. And uh, if it's someone that's, is he born with a tail or is he having surgery on that to get that tail? He uh, grew a tail. That's he, all gr- we know. he just grew it. So it's not, it's a natural thing. Uh, so yeah, I don't think that there's, if he can play the rest of the game and you know, that, that, uh, that, that tail can, can help. I, I support him being able to use it. And, uh, the, the last thing that we want is to be behind any kind of uh, tail clipping incident that, okay, you know, cheers. Oh. Matt's feeling super guilty. <laughs> about um, Sheldon. <laughs> While playing in Tampa, which okay. Toronto restaurant will the Raptors miss the most? Ooh, that's easy. That's a great question. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go off the board a bit, and I'm going to say Tim Hortons. Whoa. Whoa, I bet you that's the right so answer. So genuine. 100%. I know Pascal Siakam's favorite restaurant. Oh, what Sword is of it? No, it's called School. Oh, fair yeah. enough. Uh, school's pretty good. You know school? He uh, loves school. Yeah, school's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my second answer, though, would have been Osmos. Osmos. I've heard of a rapper. Is that the norm? Osmos. Is that the norm commercial? Is that I think, yeah, yeah. Commercial and Fred. Osmos. Norm and Fred. Yeah. Although I think Fred might have outgrown it or gotten too big time because I feel like mm. Norm's kind of the only one there now. Mm. Season one of their commercials, though, Fred was yeah. definitely involved. Yeah, Fred and Kyle like only eat in canoe or like restaurants <laughs> that are like, you know, like high up in the air. That's how they that's how they roll now. Um, Adam, which Raptor has the best taste in music and why is it Fred Van Vliet? <laughs> the answer to that is Fred Van Vliet. And the reason behind it is because he um, uh He's just, he's got no, he's, there's no bullshit with him, you know? So he could really listen to some really good, efficient techno music. Yeah. Fred's big into techno for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. Matt. Yeah. 
<laughs> you sound like you're very far away. James Harden, uh, James Harden on professionalism, missing training camp and uh, caught at the strip club. Why can't anyone play with Harden? I.e. CP3, Howard, Westbrook. Is Harden the actual problem? Well, I mean, I think that's a tough question to answer, but I'll say uh, yes, he is. I think okay, yeah, I think wow. it comes down to I think I think I'd be really if I was any star, I'd be really nervous to come in and play with James Harden. You know, like if I'm going to pick between Harden and LeBron, like I want to play with LeBron. Okay, well, LeBron's in this next one. We'll make this an all play. It's a bit of a, you know, I mean, all these questions are silly, so uh, have fun with whatever answer you want to do. How many, uh, Sheldon, we'll go to you first. How many shots at LeBron would Kyrie shoot if Kyrie could shoot shots at LeBron while shooting hoops at a gym in Vaughn? Bit in the ca- a bit of a cat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. Jesus. I'm going to answer all the shots. All the shots, correct. Uh, Adam? <laughs> none. All the shots, none. Matt, how many shots would a Kyrie shoot? Would a Kyrie shoot? Um, well, I'm, uh, can, is, is there a, a certain time of year that this is happening? Is it off Quickest season? Question. Is it is it on <laughs> season? Like there's a lot of, you know, questions. it's in, a, it's in Vaughn. Is it at Wonderland? Is it is it that hoops game at Wonderland? Oh, could be cool. You're asking me questions, so okay. Yeah. So if he's so, playing that hoops yeah. game at Wonderland yeah. so with the super high point. net, the super high net, mm-hmm. Kyrie's only hitting. He's hitting three out of ten of those. Okay, three out of ten. You got an answer, <laughs> folks. It was uh, <laughs> this was this was this was good. This is a good time, um, guys. Thank you for joining the pod. Quickish questions is done. Uh, thanks everyone for listening to the pod share subscribe all that good stuff um adam i'll go to you first uh what's up um where can people find you you know what where do you want them to check you out what's going on yeah you can find me personally i'm in the waterfalls and i'm getting <laughs> wet on those and then uh if you uh the the like you said at the beginning of the podcast the uh, tony ho podcast on cbc uh, we just put our like all the episodes of the new season, so you could check out all of those if you thought I was good on this, which I've, you probably I don't know. You're probably confused by me, and that's all good too. No, you're um, right. And then uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, that's all. Well, that's very good, um, Sheldon. What's up? Uh, where can people <laughs> find you? Where should they check you out? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Shell Alexander, uh, Instagram Sheldon Alexander, and of course the On Blast Podcast Network. We got a bunch of stuff going on there, uh, a bunch of different podcasts, including a couple basketball ones that are up and running. Uh, Ball On Blast is just a weekly look inside the NBA, both on and off the court, and we have Wrap It Up, which is our Raptors post game show, which you can find streaming online live uh wherever you get your podcast really on youtube on ig live and then ends up as always wherever you get your podcast that's wrap it up after every raptors game hell yeah um and uh shout out to i know i know you know webster so uh yes that's my guy that's my guy co-host of the ball on blast pod mr andrew webster yes he's awesome um Matt, that takes us to the end of the pod. If you feel like we're we're good to go, like we're done, please, sir, just give me the okay. Kidoki doki. This podcast has been brought to you by the Sonar Network. Sonar.